to this um, hearing of the Committee on Higher Education and Technology. It is Wednesday, March 17th, uh, 2 p.m. Uh, to open the hearing, I will ask our um, Vice Chair, Representative DeCoit, to go over the procedures. Thank you, Chair Takayama. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to allow as many people to testify as possible, there will be a two minute time limit per testifier. Please keep yourself muted and your video off while waiting to testify and after your testimony is complete. The Zoom chat function will allow you to chat with the technical staff only. Please use the chat only for technical issues. If you are disconnected unexpectedly, you may attempt to rejoin the meeting. If disconnected while presenting testimony, you may be allowed to continue if time permits. Please note the house is not responsible for any bad internet connection on the testifier's end. In the event of a catastrophic network failure, it may be necessary to reschedule the hearing or schedule a meeting for decision-making. In that case, an appropriate notice will be posted. Please refrain from profanity or uncivil behavior. Such behavior may be grounds for removal from the hearing without the ability to rejoin. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, first up, we have um, Senate Bill 1225 relating to the Board of Regents Audit Committee. And we have uh, Kendra Oishi. Kendra. Hi, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Committee members. Kendra Oishi, Executive Administrator and Secretary of the Board of Regents. Uh, we stand on our testimony in support of this uh, bill in its current form. Thank you. Thank you, Kendra. That's all the uh, testifiers we have. Um, just might note that this measure is very similar, if not identical, to a measure that um, House passed uh, earlier this session. So members, any questions? If not, we'll go on to the next bill. Thank you, Kendra. Uh, Senate Bill 135 relating to uh, telecommunications access to uh, communities. And first up, we have um, Douglas Murdoch, Office of uh, State Enterprise Technology Services. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, and members. We stand on our testimony in support of the bill. Thank you. Uh, we also have testimony from um, City and County of Honolulu, uh, Mike Formby in support, as well as uh, uh, disability, the State Disability and Communication Access Board offering uh, comments in support and suggesting we add a person with uh, communications disability to the working group. Uh, so with that members, any questions? No, oh, seeing none, let's move on. Thank you, Doug. Um, Senate Bill, uh, 717 <clears throat> relating to the um, Hawaiian Homes Commission, uh, digitizing its records. And first up, we have uh, Director William Isla. Not present. Not present. Um, we have testimony from uh, three individuals expressing support for this measure. Uh, might note that this is also another measure that um, House passed in very similar form earlier this session. So seeing as we have no one to ask questions to, we'll move on to the next one, which is House um, Senate Bill 850, uh, relating to a task force on broadband infrastructure for uh, rural areas. And we have, uh, let's see, Department of Education, Brooke Connor. Aloha, Chair, committee members. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. I'm Brooke Connor, the CIO of the Department of Education. We will stand on our written testimony in support of this measure. Of course, we're available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Well, let's see, we have um, from the Hawaii State Office of um, Community Services, Jomani Domingo de la Cruz uh, in support. Um, Bert Lum from DBED in support. Aloha, aloha, Chair. Okay, you go. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yep. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Bert Lam. I'm the Strategy Officer for Broadband in, in DBED, and uh, we stand on our written testimony in support of this bill. And of course, I'm available for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's see. We have um, Department, of it, uh, Department of Transportation, Ed Sniffen. Not present. Not present, but in support. We also have uh, testimony and support from Maui Mayor Victorino and City and County of Honolulu, Mike Formby. Um, okay, 
Let's see. Also, testimony from Office of Hawaiian Affairs and Hawaii Primary Care Association and support, as well as two individuals. Anyone else out there who um, I've missed who wish to testify on Senate Bill 850? Seeing none, members, any questions? Um, okay, seeing none, let's move on to the. I'm, I'm sorry, did I? Okay. Sure. Representative Gannadin. Apologies, um, Mr. Lum. Question for Bert Lum. He's on. Yes. Oh, hey. Good afternoon. Um, in the description, in the description of the bill, it it says um, let's see, the part of the department's report to include the findings of the task force and, and an accounting of. Amounts received from the CARE Act and Emergency Coronavirus Relief Act of 2020. I'm assuming that you're going to hope for an amendment to add in the American Recovery Act of 2021 that was just passed last Friday. Uh, yes, I'm glad you brought that up because the um, the bill in its current form refers to CARES, which is uh, which already took place and is already pretty much closed out. So there's a new uh, bills that are you know, there's the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which we're closely following, and the American Rescue Plan, which we are also closely following. Uh, so we will definitely be incorporating that into the task force activity. Um, but if you want me to add uh, amendments to that effect, I'm, I'm happy to do so. I'm assuming all this is going to be clarified um, when this lands in finance and then, um, um, and, and then after that as well. Um, but it, it probably would be helpful to, to clarify here on out so that um, everybody's on the same page um, referring to the American Recovery Plan that was just passed. Also, um, I was hoping that the Department of Transportation was here as well because um, certain amounts were um, allocated to them or just this um, in, I believe, the first two CARES Acts. So um, I, was, I was trying to... Um, like many people here, I'm trying to figure out how to expand broadband in the district. And um, and and um, hearing that the department is front of transportation is doing some things along highways um, that you folks have have a plan, and then um, that not all of it is completely consolidated just yet. So I'm hoping to have more of a constructive conversation. But I'm assuming that that's going to have to wait until the next committee. Yeah, and and you know we're we're working uh, closely with the Department of Transportation and and uh, looking at ways that we can make sure that we're uh, you know leveraging the funds that are available for broadband. So um, you know Ed's definitely part of our our uh, group to uh, make sure that we're all kind of uh, um, moving in the same direction. Yeah, and are these different pots of money? So DVED is getting um, 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 something from the American Rescue Plan, the Department of Transportation is, and DOE is? Is it all different from different places? Yeah, so, so you know, right now we're actually kind of, as we speak, waiting for the rules to come out. And in the American Rescue Plan, uh, you know, there's, there's a section that we're, uh, in particular, it's section 604, but we, we are still, you know, having discussions with uh, the federal agencies on how they define that. So what's happening is that, uh, you know, with the different departments, so let's say transportation, they'll, they may be getting funds through another, another section of that um, rescue plan, as well as the DOE. So we're trying to, you know, get a handle on, uh, you know, where uh, the funds are coming from in terms of the rescue plan and and as they as they flow toward the uh, toward Hawaii and the different uh, respective groups, you know, we want to make sure that we are uh, all talking to each other, you know, making sure that we're uh, moving in the same direction. So just just real quickly, as an example, uh, in the rescue plan, there's uh, there's an extension of E-rate that goes beyond schools as well as libraries for families and patrons of the library and school. So um, I've had conversations with the DOE on. Um, um, how does that how does that kind of fit in with uh, something that's in the Consolidated Appropriations Act, which is the emergency broadband benefit? So uh, we're we're definitely talking, and we'll keep uh, 
Uh, I mean, um, and if you want to ask Brooke, I mean, uh, you know, he's on the broadband hui, so we keep we keep uh, in touch with each other. Um, one more quick question for you, Chair. Um, would would this bill allow you to um, work with appropriate nonprofits to, to kind of expedite this process? Um, because, for example, there was the Hawaii Community Foundation worked with um, DOE. I had a, had a brief meeting with uh, Mr. Connor on, on Monday to, to talk about how that worked. Um, so, like, kind of them running the ball and then them kind of collecting from different agencies and, and working with it, working with them. Um, for communities like the one I represent, um, I'm, I am trying to figure out how to um, implement. Um, um, an infrastructure improvement in in an old uh, public housing building, um, and so um, right now the the answer is not quite clear. But the most direct way would probably be to be working with a nonprofit and then in the states and and their funding secondarily. So would this bill allow allow you to do that? Are you referring to the um, uh, SB eight fifty, or are you talking about the uh, rescue plan? Um, I'm, I'm referring directly to this bill. Would this bill allow you to work with an appropriate nonprofit to kind of expedite this process? Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the the whole idea is that we are trying to look at projects and we're looking at potential funding sources for those projects. And that includes federal, uh, federal sources as well as uh, philanthropic sources, uh, as well as potential matching from, you know, uh, let's say state government. The, the idea is that um, as long as we can identify a project and collaborate amongst the, the different stakeholders on, on funding sources, uh, you know, we're, we're more than willing and, and able to bring the parties together so that we can move this uh, as quickly as possible. So the philanthropic community is definitely a part of this. So you wouldn't need to wait until the completion of this task force as described on page six to start implementing. You could just start, start planning, right? No, we're 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 already on the way. Um, you know, even even without the task force uh, in statute. Thank you. Thank you, member. Any other uh, questions for members? If not, uh, I do have a follow-up question for um, Bert uh, Lum, and following up on Representative Ganadin's uh, questions. And it has to do with the fact that, um, you know, there is legislation moving um, in a slightly different form that uh, creates an Office of Broadband Technology in DBED. And uh, one of the concerns raised in the testimony from the Department of Transportation is that um, adding this measure in the form of a task force might somewhat complicate matters um, as far as uh, applying for loans and um, having a similar, if not identical mission to an office that is set up. Um, any thoughts on that, Bert? Uh, you know, I, I am trying to, you know, sort of uh, make sure that uh, there's, a, there's a convergence of the broadband digital equity office, as well as this task force. So that, uh, you know, they are both part of the, the effort to achieve our broadband digital equity goals. So it, it's not a matter of you have a task force and it, it has its objective and then you have an office that has its objective and they're separate. I, I am definitely advocating for, you know, the, uh, the office as well as, you know, my role in the task force uh, to represent um, not only the office, but, you know, the goals that are set uh, by, by broadband and digital equity. So, I would like to be, uh, I, I like to see it be encompassed, you know, as part of a function that the uh, broadband office would, would uh, uh, conduct. Okay, thank you. I, I guess my only other concern is having a, a task force as opposed to an individual agency or department um, ask for and oversee um, federal funds. Uh, I, I'm just not familiar with um, any similar task force that has um, managed uh, funding in this manner. So I more of a yeah. So so chair, you know, the there <clears throat> there is some language in the in the bill that um, sort of makes reference to departments applying for funds. And and we purposely kept it uh, open so that 
whether it's uh, Department of Transportation or DHHL or any of the other departments, DOE, uh, they can apply for funds. So the task force itself is not going to be applying for funds. We would we would uh, encourage the respective departments, uh, inclusive of DBED, to apply for funds, as well as any kind of partnerships that we might be able to foster with uh, with counties, as well as uh, what the Consolidated Appropriations Act calls covered partners. So there's a there's a myriad of of potential applicants, and I think you know for the purpose of the task force, we we it, well you know my interpretation is that the task force wouldn't be the applicant for these uh, federal funds. It would be um, pulling together potential projects and and seeing you know where would be appropriate where would the appropriate uh, applicant be? Is it you know, is it these departments? Is it is it um, is it the counties? Uh, and, and I think that's what the function of the, the task was task force would best serve. Okay, thank you for your input. Well, let's move on. Uh, next bill is uh, Senate Bill twelve twenty two relating to a UH Hilo um, conference center revolving fund, and we have um, let's see from the University of Hawaii Kale Raposa. Uh, good afternoon, Kale Raposa from UH Hilo. We stand on our submitted testimony and are available to answer questions if you have any. Okay, thank you. That's all the testifiers we have on this. And again, this is another measure that um, the House, um, this committee passed and the House passed in a very similar form. So um, questions, unless there are no, unless there are any questions, we'll move on to the final bill on the agenda, which is Senate Bill 1307 relating to um, in, uh, establishing a um, information technology modernization office. And first up, we have Doug Murdoch, Office of Enterprise Technology Services. Aloha, Chair and Vice Chair. We'll stand on our testimony in support of this bill and we're available to answer any questions. Thank you. And we also have um, testimony from Kurt Uduguro, a DAGS controller in support. So members, any questions for uh, Mr. Murdoch? Uh, seeing none, I do have a question um, for you, Doug. And it, um, so this bill proposes the establishment of a new office to oversee uh, modernization in state agencies, but it um, does not provide any funds to do so. Um, how do you envision this office moving forward without uh, an appropriation of funds? Our intent is to use funding from the Shared Services Technology Special Fund. Okay. And, and create a special project. Well, how large an office do you envision and uh, at what cost? We will start with five and we're looking at about a half a million dollars a year. Okay, thank you. And do you see this as a sustainable source of uh, funding for this office? We're, we're going to look to other sources of funding as well, federal funds and on some of the projects that are being built. Um, so we, we'll, have to, we'll have to work on that over time. Okay, thank you very much. If there are no other questions, we'll um, reset.
Our 2 p.m. agenda, first up, Senate Bill 1225. Um, Chair's recommendation is to move this out with uh, technical amendments. It's very similar to what we passed earlier this session. Any questions, comments? If not, Vice Chair, for the vote. Members voting on SD1225, SD1 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye. Representative Baladi. Aye. Representative Gandon. Aye. Representative Gates, excuse. Representative Hashimoto. Aye. Representative Capella. Aye. Representative Takashi Ono. Uh, aye. Representative <laughs> Quinlan, excuse. Representative Woodson. Aye. Representative Yamani. Aye. Representative Okimoto. Aye. Chair, your measures are done. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, Senate Bill 135. Um, recommendation is to move this out with a couple of um, Amendments, uh, first adding a person with uh, communication disabilities to uh, the working group. Secondly, um, adding in a dissolution date for the working group of um, uh, June 21, 22. No, yeah, I'm sorry, 2022. And uh, finally, uh, technical amendments. Questions, comments? Not vice chair. Members voting on SB 135, SD 2 with amendments. Uh, chair and vice chair vote aye, recognizing the absence of Representative Gates and Representative Quinlan. Any reservations or needs? Seeing none, chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Uh, SB 717, um, Hawaiian Homes Commission. Uh, just want to add a a uh, new defective date on this and move this out. This is um, identical to a measure we passed out earlier this session. Questions, comments, vice chair? Members voting on SB 717, SB 1. Uh, chair and vice chair vote aye, recognizing the absence of Quinlan and Representative Gates. Any reservations or needs? Seeing none, chair recommendation is adopted. Thank you. The next bill, um, SB 850, creating a task force on broadband infrastructure for rural communities. I just noted uh, during our um, question and answer period that um, you know this uh, proposal is redundant to measures that are currently moving that would set up an office of digital equity in the DBED. And so rather than um, be redundant or create confusion in, over their roles, in this area, I'm gonna defer this bill. My next bill is um, SB 1222 relating to UH Hilo Conference Center revolving fund. Um, we'll move this out with uh, technical amendments. Again, uh, we acted on a similar bill earlier this session. Questions, comments? Vice Chair? Members voting on SB 1222 SD2 with amendments. Chair and Vice Chair vote aye, recognizing the absence of representative Quinlan, the representative Gates, any reservations or needs? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation. Thank adopted. you. The final bill, SB 1307, relating to um, establishing uh, an information technology modernization management office. Um, I'm going to move this out with a defective date, also technical amendments, and noting in the report language that um, uh, funds for this new office are. Um, uh, intended to come from a special fund that is um, uh, available to ETS. So any um, questions, comments? If not, Vice Chair. Members voting on SB 1307, SB 2, what amendments? Chair and Vice Chair vote aye, recognizing the absence of Representative Quinlan and Representative Gates. Any reservations or nays? Seeing none, Chair, your recommendation. Thank you, members. We're adjourned. Oh, and by the way, we'll, we will not have a hearing on Friday.